After years of labor, the auditorium was completed in the summer of 1999 and was dedicated on July the 4th with Mr. and Mrs. Ralph Sexton Sr. present and Miss Jackie Sexton prayed the prayer of dedication over the sanctuary that Anchor still uses to this day. The year 2000 was a year of growing, a year of expansion, a year of continuing the daycare, the Bible college, the academy, and in June, the Supreme Court announced that it was against the law to have an invocation uh, at the ball games. And so We Still Pray was formed. And we had a rally at uh, A.C. Reynolds High School. And we were expecting between five and 10,000. And estimates are over 32,000 people showed up that night, shutting down I-240, 40, and backed up I-26 and God moved in a great and glorious manner during the We Still Pray campaign. And you see, while the pleasure of all of God's people is important, the pleasure of God is the critical thing. I am thankful that I live in a land where we can gather like this with no fear of anyone seeing who would come in here. And that we can raise our voice and our sacred tones to God and say, in this land, we still trust in God and want the liberties our forefathers fought for. But the elected officials, we've had several come in, many were turned away, could not get here. All those holding elected office tonight, would you... I've had the pleasure of spending some time with this dear family. And they live what they preach. Amen. To the platform, the pastor of the Trinity Baptist Church and the director of Ralph Sexton Ministries, Dr. Ralph Sexton, Jr. whenever in the academy one morning mm -hmm. in the assembly uh, one of the little boys came in and told Mr. Coswell that he wanted to be saved well that started um, a good spirit-filled uh, service that morning and the kids were just running up and down the hall and crying and praising the Lord Mr. Coswell didn't even want to stop all of that so to start the class so classes were a little bit late that morning and my grandson Samuel and uh, Derek Gillum were among the ones that prayed that morning for salvation. I don't remember all the names of the students saved that day, but several in our class prayed for salvation. Working with the students, with, with the kids, it was good, it was wonderful. I had some grandchildren here in the academy, and of course they wanted to call me grandma, and they couldn't because being in my position. I don't think Pastor Darsh knew this, but on field trips, I let them all call me grandma, all the students in the... And now, some of the grown stu grown people that are, were in the academy and can see me out in the store somewhere, they there's Grandma Hyde, hey, Grandma Hyde. Matthew Barton and Jesse Horton gave me a nickname, and I have treasured it all through the years, and that's Miss Hawkeye Hyde, because they couldn't get by with anything. They said I had eyes in the back of my head. Just sweet little memories like that has been stuck with us. I come somewhere around 2000, 99 or 2000, and uh, have, have uh, the first couple of years, I think, just attended church and then got to working in missions uh, with, with Brother Blanton and Dr. Whittemore. And um, they've all been good years. I, I, I appreciate the church, appreciate Pastor Barton, and uh, they've all been wonderful years. God has been gracious enough to put me with a, uh, a God-fearing uh, church, 
uh, with a, a God-fearing pastor and, and people that care about the community and not only helping with, with, with physical things, but most importantly helping with, with outreach and helping with spreading the good word of God. And that's the most important things. So. Two thousand one is the year that our first international Bible college students arrived from the Philippines in January. Welcome to the platform, please, Dr. R. A. White. So that year put in the new pews in the sanctuary. They, they came in and we worked all night long on Saturday night into Sunday morning getting the pews in so we could have service and begin share that year. Of course, 2001 was the year of September the 11th, the 9-11 attacks. We'll never forget that day and the broadcasting and that day. We were one of the first stations to pick up on it and go exclusive broadcasting. And we locked in and broadcast that for several days. And my, how God used that to rally people uh, in our area. And uh, they were glued to the radio as we were flipping from station to station and carrying all of the news uh, during that time. It was in December 2001 that Dwayne Whittemore came on board as our director of missions. And the Whittemores moved back to North Carolina from South Texas. They supported me once I went into missions uh, from then until I came on staff here permanently in 2001. And uh, then, of course, from there, it's just go, go, go. We, and, uh, of course, the Lord's blessed. I never dreamed of, I'm just a country boy, but I uh, got to go around the world, preach, and, you know, we, uh, we Egypt, Bolivia, Philippines many times, Africa, uh, West Indies, Jamaica, you name it, the Lord helped us and blessed us. And it's just a joy, and I, I love Brother Barton, and he's been an inspiration to me and my family. And what an honor to get to work with Anchor Baptist Church and ministries uh, these many years now. So I uh, never dreamed of getting to do this. I'm not as young as I used to be, but still going. But we came to the ministry, in, I believe Dr. Barton said in 2001. We were in a ministry that sort of we could not stay with, and Dr. Barton was helping us, sending supplies there for us to use. It was a helps ministry to help missionaries on the border. And uh, when he realized my husband was leaving on his, one of his wish lists, was my husband's name as the director of missions. And so he contacted my husband. We came as my husband to be the director of Anchor Baptist Missions International. On January the 1st, 2002, we made a trip to North Alabama where we purchased a Freightliner FL-70. We still have that truck. It's now a refrigerator truck, and that began the shipping ministry for Anchor Baptist Missions. We sadly said goodbye to the Fannings as they left for Bolivia in March of 2002. We broke ground on the warehouse on November the 12th, 2002, having no idea of the problems with the soil and the other challenges we would face. And it took four years to see a project that we were hoping would take six months, four years to see it fulfilled. But the warehouse serves today in a greater capacity than anyone could have ever dreamed. We started the warehouse. Uh, a lot of money went into the ground out there. It was, I guess it was water or something under there. So much trouble getting the foundation the right and we were out of money, and we didn't even have anything to show for it. I mean, we worked and worked and worked out there, but we didn't sure didn't have a building. And we just were at a standstill and just, you know, oh, what's next? And then one Wednesday night, 
preacher was on the radio and I was down here in my office and a lot of times I worked just straight through service on Wednesday. And, and uh, somebody came in and dropped $100,000 in my office. And I just, <laughs> and they said it was for the warehouse. So I went screaming down the hallway, just screaming down the hallway and preacher was on the air. And I ran in there and I'm just beating on his back. <laughs> and he's like, have you lost your mind? And he put everything on hold and he turned, he said, what is wrong with you? And I'm trying to show him the money. And then we were just squalling and rejoicing. And I don't even know what all was said, but just talking about how good God's been and how the, the people volunteer and give it their time and do everything. And the next thing I know, the next morning, a, a Christian businessman had been listening to prayer time. And he called in and sent in a check for to be divided among the staff just as a bonus, just as a gift. So it's just constant, the blessings that God has given us. In um, 2002, we came here to go to Bible college and to work during the day in the Christian school and the radio station and then work here in the church also uh, with the music and with the young people. She and I courted from that point on for two years in Bible college. Her dad was in Bible college here, so she came with him at night to night classes and that's kind of how we got started. Uh, 2002, uh, I came to Sheraton and uh, that day changed uh, my course of life. Uh, I heard Benny Carper preach, it wasn't no accident that we're here. Buster Seaton preached uh, on the compassion of Christ and that night uh, Brother Rudy Smith preached on the strange love of God. And uh, I can still see him today pointing that finger at me and asking, do you want the death angel to visit you again? So I surrendered and uh, I thought I had totally surrendered, but I, it was 2012 before I totally surrendered. Two thousand three, we continued to work on the warehouse. We also renovated the old church for staff housing and uh, moved Joe and, and Christy Johnson as they came back in the spring of 2003 into that facility as they took up their place once again in the ministry here at Anchor. In the summer of 2003, we had spent all of our money on the foundation and having to drive piling, 70 pilings driven down into the uh, soil and uh, 254 yards of concrete and two tractor trailer loads of steel just in the footer. And so there was no money to put the steel in the air. And the, the company waited as long as they could and then they shipped uh, the steel trucks COD. They kept arriving on a Tuesday. It was a Monday and we did not have the money. And Shannon and Christie were on Swap Shop and they mentioned it. God moved. And that afternoon, people began to drive into the, to the building and pile handfuls of money on the desk. I stood in the foyer, not even know what was going on. They summoned me and I came to the foyer and stood there in amazement as $44,000 came in and we were able to go to the bank and get a certified check and pay the drivers of the steel trucks early the next morning. A move of God that was so unusual and so uh, impromptu that no one can explain it even to this day. In 2003, my family and I moved back here to North Carolina after being gone for eight years. 
It was pretty strange being away from the ministry since I was practically born and raised in our radio station. I attended the school and when we left I attended another ACE school when we were gone. But it was amazing when we moved back because it, it still felt like home. The first thing I can remember that happened when we came back was the church had a massive youth rally and it was a Be A Witness rally. And we had Steve Pickett and his sons come and I can just remember all the youth from around this area come and attend and just the stir of God in the community that happened through that. My heart was stirred and music has always been a passion of my life and for the past few years God has allowed me and my family to travel around and sing and minister to other churches and other people through music. And it's just amazing to see how God can work through you if you just give your life to Him. If you become a witness for Jesus Christ, it's because you get up and you walk right back into the battle making the choice. One becomes a witness of Jesus Christ. It is his choice. My greatest memory of this church is in the fall of 2003, it was my son reached school age. And uh, we first went to public school and realized how bad it's gotten, especially from when I went to school until now the, the system has went downhill. We heard about the, uh, the academy here at Anchor Baptist Church. So we decided, hey, this looks, this sounds good. Got him in, got him enrolled, and just realized the change that it had in my son's life. Really tell that God was in this place. For me and my family, we started, hey, this is great. And we started realizing, meeting the people, and so when my daughter was born, we enrolled her. And, uh, and it's been just a great ride since. In 2004, we continued the warehouse construction in the cold and in the rain. It was also the year that one of our Philippine students uh, was trapped in Mexico and not allowed to come back into the United States due to a problem with his visa. And that prompted a trip to the Philippine Islands and the Southeastern Asian Bible Conference in July of 2004. In the fall of 2004, a hurricane came ashore on the Gulf Coast by the name of Ivan and it made its way into western North Carolina, knocking out power, taking down trees, causing area flooding. WGCR remained on the air through the night that night, and at one time thought the window was gonna burst because the wind blew so hard. Uh, it was the fulfillment of a dream when the property was used to its fullest extent. With generators operating, uh, we brought grills in, set up cooking in the parking lot, had a drive-through, People would come through and get meals. People were coming in and using our showers. We had folks from uh, all walks of life coming in, filling up water, carrying it out, and the county chose to use this as their distribution point, bringing in tractor trailer loads of ice and other much needed commodities. And we saw God use the property in a great way during Hurricane Ivan. When July 17, 2004 was the most unforgettable day in my life. It was on my wedding day that was witnessed by seven Americans and most of all it was being officiated by one of my heroes, mentor and pastor, Dr. Randy Barton. All of these things that I'm enjoying right now would be impossible without you being used by God. The chance and privilege of meeting you all was the greatest thing that ever happened to me. Thank you for faithfully serving the Lord. In 2004, that was the year that the Lord used Anchor and the church family to let me know that God's mercy could give hope to someone that was so undeserving. 
And I just want to thank the Lord that He used Anchor to let me know that He still had something for me to do.